In a previous video, I debunked many myths and misconceptions concerning tip contact time, but some people still questioned the results and wondered if things would be different with other stroke types. In this video, I debunk the myth that stroke timing and cue acceleration at tip contact are important to the action of a shot. Spoiler alert, they are not. People who think stroke timing and cue acceleration during tip contact are important often cite a video series from Barry Stark. Here are some excerpts. What is timing? It's all about the length of time of contact. Now if you can prolong that contact time, the timing will be better. Barry showed slow motion video comparing pro player shots with both good and bad timing as judged by the player. Unfortunately, care was not taken to control variables like cue speed and tip offset from center, both of which can affect tip contact time. Also, there were no definitive measurements. Later on in the year, when we get the camera back, we will have definitive measurements. In a follow-up video, there were no additional slow motion clips or measurements. Instead, a selection of quotes from a respected book were cited. Joe Davis, 20 years world champion. And everybody relates to this book as the Bible on snooker. It is a prolonging of the tip on the ball. The drag is caused by the tip holding on to the ball. You feel the tip holding on to and spinning the ball. I don't mean to pick on Barry or be disrespectful to him or his followers, but as we will see, some of those claims are complete rubbish. Just because somebody says or writes something does not make it true, even if that person is a past world champion or respected instructor. Per the videos and info on the resource pages linked in the video description, tip contact time varies a little with shot speed, tip hardness, and amount of tip offset. But as explained by the videos and info on the pages, these small differences are unimportant. Here are excerpts from my Q-tip contact time myth-busting video that debunks common misconceptions. First, some people think the tip stays in contact with the cue ball for a perceptible amount of time. This is simply false. Here is some recent high-speed video camera footage from Pubo Huang, filmed at 24,000 frames per second. Regardless of how a hit might feel, the Q-tip is in contact with the cue ball only for a minuscule amount of time. For this playing cue with a hard leather tip at lag shot speed, the tip contact time is only about a thousandth of a second. Some people think you have control over the cue and cue ball while the tip is in contact with the ball. This is simply false. What you do during the stroke into the ball does have an effect, but at contact, the cue does all the work. The incredibly brief tip contact time is much too short for the grip hand to have any important effect. What you feel during a hit is the cue slowing down a lot as a result of the hit, and the force required to speed up the cue again after the cue ball is long gone. Visit the linked resource pages and watch the entire Mythbuster video if you want to see conclusive proof. In a stroke acceleration study I did with Bob Jewett many years ago, we used slow motion video analysis to show how cue speed varies during a stroke. This graph shows how measured cue speed varied over distance with a typical good stroke. The speed increases gradually as the cue is smoothly accelerated during the forward stroke. Just before tip contact, the speed has reached a maximum value so there is no more acceleration. During the incredibly brief tip contact time, the cue loses significant speed. Then the momentum of the grip hand and arm caused the cue to speed up some after the hit. Then the cue decelerates to a stop during the remainder of the follow-through. A European study involving 20 top players also showed that most elite pool players reach maximum cue speed just before cue tip contact. Here's an excerpt from a past video of mine that explains the important aspects of good stroke timing. A stroke with good timing has a slow backswing, a non-rushed transition between the back and forward swings, smooth acceleration forward, and no slowing before cue ball contact. Here's a graph that compares a good, smoothly accelerating stroke to several common, bad timing strokes. The graph shows how cue speed changes with time from the beginning of the forward swing to tip contact with the cue ball. A stroke with good timing starts forward slowly and smoothly accelerates to maximum speed at the cue ball. People who rush the backswing transition or who try to create speed too quickly have a rushed or impulsive stroke. People who generate speed early but then slow down into the cue ball have a decelerating stroke. 
People who try to keep the speed constant over a long distance into the cue ball have a constant speed stroke. Again, the green curve represents good timing. One reason why most top players reach maximum speed just before tip contact is it results in the most consistent and accurate speed control with the least effort. With the speed leveled off at tip contact, if the acceleration timing is off a little, it does not affect the cue speed very much. In my Secrets of a Good Stroke video, I show examples of pro strokes exhibiting good timing. Again, stroke timing best practices include pulling the cue back slowly, not rushing the transition from the backstroke to the forward stroke, accelerating smoothly without slowing into the cue ball, all while staying relaxed and still. Now let's look at results from a slow motion video analysis study I recently did with Pubo Huang. Pubo films shots with different stroke accelerations to see if Q-tip contact times changed. The footage was recorded at 8,569 frames per second. The same cue ball speed was used for each shot, based on how far the cue ball traveled. If the cue ball did not stop within a half a diamond of the head cushion, the shot was not included in the analysis. Here's an example clip showing how video tracking software written by Pubo with assistance from Ronnie149 automatically captured the motion data for each stroke. Here are the videos for three different strokes that resulted in very close to the same cue speed at tip contact. The top video is of an accelerating stroke. The middle video is for a typical stroke with the cue speed reaching a maximum and not changing at cue tip contact. So in this case, there is no acceleration at contact. The bottom video is of a decelerating stroke where the cue speed is slowing before tip contact. Notice that the ball speed is very close to the same for all three shots. The only noticeable differences in the three hits is the ball speed being slightly less for the normal stroke and the cue speeding up more after the hit with the accelerating stroke causing the Q-tip to follow the ball more closely. Many people think an accelerating stroke will create a longer tip contact time, and a decelerating stroke will create a shorter tip contact time, but based on our measurements, this was not the case. Here are the plots showing how the Q speed varied with time for each of the three strokes. You can clearly see the increasing speed before contact with the accelerating stroke, and the decreasing speed with the decelerating stroke. The normal stroke Q speed was slightly slower at contact, but the accelerating and decelerating speeds at contact were almost identical. There was no measurable difference among the three contact times. The tip was in contact with the ball between 11 and 12 video frames with each stroke. This corresponds to a time interval of 1.3 to 1.4 thousandths of a second. The tip contact time was not prolonged by Q acceleration, and it was not diminished by Q deceleration. How the cue speed changes before tip contact has no effect on the outcome of the shot. During the incredibly brief tip contact time, the only things that matter are the speed of the cue, the tip offset from center, and the cue direction. The type, quality, or timing of the stroke into the ball have no effect on what happens during tip contact. Although, to create the desired tip contact point at the desired cue speed with accuracy and consistency, stroke timing is very important. See the videos, info, and links on the Stroke Timing resource page for more information. I want to thank Pubo for doing all the long and hard super slow motion video work and analysis. I hope you guys agree that the common myths concerning tip contact time and stroke timing and acceleration are now solidly debunked. If you want to learn more about any topic in this video, check out the resource pages linked in the video description. And if you want to work on improving your stroke, see the videos and info at the Stroke Best Practices page. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.